What's up you guys? Welcome back. Today I am super excited because we are going to be doing the ultimate drugstore starter kit. This is like the stuff that you guys need if you're just starting out in makeup or even if you're like a veteran but you want to see what the best of the best of the drugstore is or maybe you're a makeup artist you want to add to your kit but in an affordable way. These are the best products for the drugstore. I literally use these products like all the time and this is really everything that you need. You know like you guys know I love high-end makeup. I love Sephora. I love bougie beautiful packaging but at the same time I also love drugstore store makeup like you do not need to spend a lot of money to get really beautiful makeup looks and I feel like I do so many videos on my channel trying to show you guys that because I feel like when I was just starting out in makeup I always thought like okay well if something's expensive then it's gonna be good so like I have to spend a lot of money to really get good makeup and that's really not the case anymore the drugstore has come a long way all of these products are amazing and they're all so affordable. And it's been about a year since I did my last drugstore starter kit video and I realized a couple things. One, there's been a lot of new releases in 2019 that have become my absolute favorites that have replaced older favorites at the drugstore. So there's a lot of new stuff today. And two, in my last drugstore starter kit video, I didn't show you guys how I use the products. Like I talked through each of the products and why I loved it, but I didn't use them in a tutorial. So today, obviously, we're gonna be doing a tutorial, which is why I have no makeup on. Cause I'm gonna show you guys the best products and I'm also gonna show you how to use them. So I hope that this is helpful. I am having some serious static cling issues with my hair so please disregard anyways make sure you guys subscribe to my channel if you have not already and click the little bell right next to the subscribe button so you get notified of all of my future uploads and without further ado let's go ahead and get started all right I zoomed you guys in so you can really see everything as we apply it so first step is primer I have two primers that I absolutely love and they both are very very different so I wanted to include both of them in some of these categories I am gonna have multiple favorites just to give you guys options like maybe you're only gonna go to Target maybe you're only gonna go to CVS maybe something will be sold out so I want you to have options you know regardless of where you're gonna go shopping for these products and I will of course have everything linked down below if you're an online shopper like me just check the description box I'll link everything down there but for primer I do have two options number one is the covergirl true blend base business so they have a variety of these that basically target different skin concerns in general I really really like this formula and all of them are really good but my most used is the moisturizing one I do have dry skin it really helps to hydrate my skin and plump it up before makeup application so I absolutely love this and I highly recommend it. Another one which is a newer favorite that I definitely wanted to mention is the e.l.f. Poreless Putty Primer. So this works completely different. This isn't really going to give you any hydration or anything, but what this is is it's like a putty kind of consistency where the CoverGirl one is a liquid, and this is going to help to really fill in your pores and give a really flawless canvas to your face. So to be honest, I use both of them quite frequently because they do do totally different things. So you can definitely double prime. You don't need to use both, but I'm just going to use both today for sakes of the video, um, and I'll show you guys basically how they work differently so this one is the covergirl one so again this is going to give us some nice hydration it's going to plump up the skin but it's not really going to give us any pore filling action or anything um oh my gosh can you guys see like my skin literally just drank that up like water like i have to go in with a little bit more for my forehead because i am a dry skin gal so hydration is key for me and for my makeup to look you know nice so I love, love, love this primer. If you're running late and you didn't have time to moisturize your skin, then you can use this. So my skin already feels better, soaked in really, really nicely. I am gonna go in now with the e.l.f. Poreless Putty, and I'm gonna focus this right in the areas that I have in large pores, which for me is just around my nose area. Um, so you're just gonna basically glide this on top. It's gonna help to fill them in and kind of smooth over them so they're not as noticeable. And once you put foundation on top, it is a lot more detectable um, because if you do have enlarged pores, when you apply foundation over, a lot of times you, you will still be able to see those pores. Um, with foundation, sometimes it can actually be more visible with foundation on top of it. So I do like to go in with this. So highly recommend both of those primers. Up next, we are gonna jump into foundation and this is also a category that I have two. I wanted to pick two foundations because everybody's skin is different. I know I have dry skin, but not everybody that watches me has dry skin. So I wanted to have both a dewy, luminous, kind of more natural foundation while also including a matte foundation for people that like both finishes. For myself personally, I still like a matte finish with my dry skin. It just has to be the right matte that isn't drying. And that's basically what the CoverGirl Matte Made is for me. I love this foundation. It's really really good it comes in literally like a million different colors I think they have over 50 shades it is a matte foundation but it is not drying to the skin so even if you have a dry skin you can definitely use this it's full coverage it has a pump it's beautiful I highly highly recommend it also lasts a really long time and it is an oil free foundation so I really really like this if you want a more dewy luminous glow to your skin I highly recommend the wet n wild photo focus this is the newer one the dewy version I've used this in a ton of my recent videos super affordable looks super super beautiful on the skin definitely is a dewy 
dewy finish. So you're gonna have a beautiful glow, but it is long lasting. So I have really, really been loving this as well. So depending on the type of finish that you like to your skin would be which foundation that I would recommend for you. Since I have used this in like a billion of my last recent videos, I am gonna use the CoverGirl Matte Made today because it's been a while since I used this in one of my videos, but highly recommend both of them. And in the description box, I can link a previous video where I used the Wet n Wild one because um, I've used it a lot recently if you're interested in seeing it. So I am shade M40 in this foundation. Again, there's a huge shade range, so there should hopefully be a shade for everyone in this. Before we jump in with the foundation, we do have to talk products to apply the foundation. So I have two, again, that I wanted to mention. I promise I don't think I have two in every single category. But again, I wanted to give you guys options. Maybe I do have two in every category. But these are two sponges that I absolutely love. So this one is the Real Techniques one. Um, love this. It's a great drugstore option. Let me look up the exact price of this. Okay, so this is $6 at Ulta. So great drugstore sponge to blend out all of your liquid and cream products. Um, another thing that I did want to mention is the Juno & Co sponge. I've used this in a lot of my recent tutorials. I really, really like this. This one, if you can see, has a different texture than like your typical beauty sponge. It's kind of like fuzzy, but I feel like that really helps to like adhere the foundation really nicely on the skin. This is also $6, but I know people will complain because it can't be found at a drugstore, I don't think. So it's not technically drugstore, so I did just want to put it out there. I do prefer the Juno & Co one to be completely honest. I've been using this honestly more than like the traditional beauty blender But since this is a drugstore video I am going to be using the real techniques one which again is great and can be found in store at drugstores You can't find the Juno one in store at drugstores. I'm pretty sure it's only online But I will put a link again in the description to where you can get these because I do really like it So I did want to mention it because I had been using it a lot But we're gonna use the real techniques one today to apply our foundation So I feel like I've been talking for like the past 25 minutes. Let's get into applying some stuff <laughs> So I'm just going to dot this on the skin. This is pretty full coverage, um, so I'm just gonna go in with that for right now. I think that should be more than enough and just blend that into my skin. You can see as soon as I blend it, you know, that it is a matte finish. I remember the first time I tried this because it looks so matte like right off the bat, I was like a little nervous because I was like, oh my God, it's just gonna be so drying on my already dry skin, but it's not. So I really, really like this and it gives a really beautiful coverage like that covered up all of my redness. Okay, so coverage wise, I'm good with that. Again, it can be built up to be more full coverage, but I think this is pretty good right now and we are ready to move on to a concealer. So concealer shouldn't be much of a surprise. My favorite drugstore concealer is the e.l.f. Camo Concealer. This is the original one. They did just recently come out with a Lumi version. I actually prefer the original. I feel like it's a little bit more coverage. And I don't know, I like the original one better, which is surprising, because normally I like dewy versions of products better. But I use this in shade Light Beige. It is my favorite. It's very full coverage. It's beautiful. So that's what I'm going to be using today. And I'm going to apply this to my under eyes. Obviously, you guys can see the shade that I'm using is pretty light. I prefer to go in with a lighter shade of concealer, like significantly lighter than my foundation to really brighten up my under eyes because I like that highlighted look, but of course you can feel free to like use one that's more similar shade to your foundation if you would prefer that and not so much of a contrast. I am going to put it around other areas of my face though just to balance out the highlight so it's not just bright underneath my eyes, but it's balanced throughout my face. And then going back in with the Real Techniques blending sponge to blend it all out. I could have probably used a shade darker in the uh, concealer. I'm looking at now and I'm like, mm, because I did self tan last night. So this is normally the shade I use when my self tan is like fading or I don't have self tan. But you guys, you guys get the picture, you know? Oh my gosh, the wind is whipping outside. I keep thinking I'm hearing sounds, but it's just the wind like whipping against my window. So I'm sorry if y'all can hear that. Mother nature is just not interested in me filming a video right now. Okay, to set underneath my eyes, I have two favorites. I can't decide in between them. I love them both so, so much. So this has been a forever favorite of mine. Um, this is the Wet n Wild Reserve Your Cabana. I use this all the time and I always get questions because it technically says bronzer on it. But it is a light powder and I actually love to use this to set underneath my eyes. It's really brightening and it looks really pretty. So I love this. It's one of my favorites. But then I do also really, really love the CoverGirl True Blend Minerals Banana Powder. So this is like a more yellow toned powder where the Wet n wild powder is pretty much just like a really light beige where if you guys can see in here this one is definitely a more yellow which is really really great for underneath the eyes and really brightening it up I would say if your skin tone is more on the medium to deep side, this will probably be a better option for you. This one might look a little too stark white underneath the eyes, where if you're a little bit more fair toned, probably the Wet n Wild one might be better. This might pull like a little weirdly yellow underneath your eyes and like look weird, <laughs> for lack of a better term. I'll actually set one eye with one and one eye with the other to show you guys the difference. It looks beautiful both ways. So I'll go in with the CoverGirl Banana Powder first and I'll set this eye with it. 
This reminds me a lot of the Fenty Pro Filter. It's basically a dupe for it. I love the Fenty Pro Filter in the shade Butter from Under Eyes, um, but this one is like a fraction of the cost. So thank you, CoverGirl. So that is the banana powder. And then I'll go in the Wet n Wild on the other side, which if you guys can see, it's a bit lighter, a bit more brightening because it's more of like that light beige instead of a yellow undertone. So you guys can kind of see the difference. Both are nice. I would say the CoverGirl one maybe is a little bit more natural, where this one is like boom, light, bright underneath the eye. Once like my eye makeup and everything is done, it looks a little bit better, I would say. I feel like it looks a little harsh now just because there is nothing on my eyes. But like I said, I love both, so it's really a matter of personal preference. I'm gonna bring a little bit of the Wet n Wild on this side though, just so that I don't look like I have two completely different under eye colors going on. And I'm gonna bring a mixture of both just where I highlight it in the other areas. Alrighty, up next for all over powder, I love, 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 love the e.l.f. Halo Glow Setting Powder. This is so, so beautiful. It's very sheer. It is tinted. I believe it comes in three different shades. It really isn't going to add any coverage or any color to your skin. It's really just going to help to set your makeup, but it's going to also give you this subtle, like, all over glow that is so, so pretty. So whether you used a matte foundation and you still want to look a little bit glowy, or you used a Lumi foundation and you want to set it, but you don't want to get rid of that glow, this is a great option. I've been loving it. It's also great for travel because it does have a sifter that stays in that you can just move back and forth. So I'm going to set all over my face with this. So this is the medium shade, I believe. Again, like I said, they do have three different shades, but it's really not going to really provide much color or coverage. It's really just going to set everything. And I'm just going to dust this on our face. Obviously, we used a matte foundation today, so it's going to just get us more of like a subtle glow while still setting your makeup. But I have been absolutely loving this. It's my favorite um, setting powder from the drugstore. Up next, we're going to move on to brows. This should come as no surprise to anybody. I've literally used this for years. This is the CoverGirl Ultra Fine Brow Pencil in Soft Brown. It's amazing. I love it. It has a variety of different shades. You get a little spoolie on one side and then the product on the other. I've used this in countless tutorials. So I'm going to just go in and fill in my brows with this right now. It is the best. Like, I use this over high-end brow pencils all the time. So, you know, whether you're talking drugstore or high-end, this really is, like, an absolute favorite of mine. It also has, like, just the right amount of wax to it, which is so important. Like, you need your brow pencils to have some kind of wax to help to keep your brows in place, but you don't want them to have too much wax or it's just going to look fake and, like, be an absolute mess. So... This one is just like the perfect amount and I love it. And I change the shade that I use in this sometimes. Sometimes I'll use like honey brown, which is a little bit lighter. Today I'm going in with soft brown, which is a little bit darker. My roots are getting pretty dark because I haven't done my hair color in a while. So I figured we would match it. The girl that does my color is going to be like, um, you need to come in now. <laughs> but yeah, I highly recommend this brow pencil. It is the best. So I'm just going to go in and fill in this other eyebrow. All right, up next we are going to jump into eyeshadow palettes. It was very hard to narrow this down, but I would have to say my favorite is the Profusion Mirage palette. This is just so, so beautiful. I love Profusion's palettes. You guys know I love ColourPop. They're beautiful. They are so, so affordable. I want to say this palette is like $12 and you get 35 different shades. I get my Profusion palettes at Walmart. But I know a lot of Targets are starting to have them too. Um, you can also definitely get them readily available online. But in store, my Walmart has them also look in a Target. But why I love this palette specifically is there's such a great mix in this palette. There's mattes, there's shimmers, there's pressed glitters, there's neutral shades, but then there's also like some fun colors too. So you can still do colorful looks if you want to, but the, definitely you can do a ton of everyday looks. So I just love this palette specifically. I really like their eyeshadows. I think they work really, really great for the price. And I would say for a starter kit, if you can only get one, one eyeshadow palette from the drugstore, I would recommend this just because of the variety of looks you can do for only $12. So that's what we're going to use today. So we're going to first jump in with this neutral transition shade right here. Again, you can do colorful and fun looks with this palette because we do have some beautiful pops of color in here, but today I'm going to keep it a little more neutral, a little more everyday, again, because this is like a drugstore starter kit kind of video. So I don't want to do anything like crazy. So I'm going to just buff that into the crease as a transition shade, it is always really important to first go in with some sort of transition shade before you go in with like deeper, darker colors. Um, and this palette has a lot of matte neutral shades in it, so there should hopefully be a transition shade that should work for most skin tones as well. For my transition shade that I use, I try to go for something that's maybe like two to three shades darker than my skin tone. Kind of like contouring out your eyes a little bit. You know, you're adding depth and definition um, to your eyes, but with eyeshadow. 
Up next, to further build up that crease, we're gonna jump in with this shade right here. And if you guys can see too in this palette, there is cool tones, but then there also is warm tones. So you do have both. I'm using a little bit more cool tones today, but I love my warm tones too. So I'm just adding that into the crease to add a little bit more depth and definition. With eyeshadow, especially when you're first starting, you wanna gradually build up color. So you wanna go in with the lightest shade and then kind of build it up to those deeper shades as you use them. Um, that was something that I definitely didn't do when I first got into makeup and I never really understood like why my eyeshadow didn't look good. And it was because I was just like straight going in with like the darkest shade. Like you gotta, you gotta build it up. There are some people who can go in with like any shade and just blend it and not have to do, you know, the whole gradient thing, but I do this all the time. I just think it helps to make everything look more blended and kind of put together. Now you can definitely leave your eyes like this, but I'm gonna show you the next step if you wanna bring it one shade deeper, do a little bit more of a smokier eye. I'm gonna jump in with this shade right here and I'm gonna bring that kind of on this outer corner and just build it in that area just to really smoke everything out and build out that kind of outer shape, outer V like to our eye. And I'm gonna bring it a little bit beneath as well just so everything kind of blends together. And these shadows are pigmented so you don't need to go in with a ton on your brush. I like to build up pigment. So I really only go in with a little bit on my brush. A lot of times I'll like tap off the excess like this. I just go like that so that I don't accidentally go in with too much and then it's like hard to blend out, you know? Because that has happened to me one too many times. And if you guys notice, all the shades that I have gone in with so far are all matte shades, meaning they don't have any glitter or shimmer to them. I like to build my eyes with matte shades and then I'll add shimmer and glitter towards the end. You can definitely build like in your crease and stuff with shimmers. I just personally find it looks better and it's easier to do it with mattes, which is what I like to do. But there is no right or wrong way, you know, to do eyeshadow. All over the lid, I'm gonna go in with this beautiful shimmer shade right here. I'm gonna first use my finger to pack this onto my lid because shimmer shades normally apply best with like a finger and then I'm just gonna go in with the brush after to get any areas that I can't get with my finger. But I love this kind of champagne gold glitter. So I'm just gonna pack it with my finger on both eyes first and then we'll go in with a brush after. If you don't have long nails, you can probably use your finger for your whole eye. I just personally can't because of my nails. So for the rest of my eye, I'm just going to use a little flat top brush and just pack on the shadow in the areas that I missed. Another great tip when working with shimmer shadows is to dampen your brush a little bit so you can just spritz a little water on it and that will also help a lot of times the shimmer show up a little bit more pigmented and just like adhere to the eye a little bit better. To highlight, I'm going to mix together the lightest matte shade in the palette with that same shimmer shade we just used all over the eye. I'm going to use both of them, and I'm just going to pop that beneath the brow bone, like so. Just make that area pop, and a little bit in the inner corner too, just to make sure that stays really nice and bright, which make your eyes appear more open. And then I'm going to go in with that second cool tone brown we used just to finish off underneath my eyes, and just smoke everything out down there just so we don't have any harsh lines and everything blends together. Okay, moving on to liner. I love the e.l.f. H2O liner. This is one of my favorites. It's like a little liner pen like this. I find it very easy to use and it's waterproof, so for the most part, it does not budge. So I'm gonna go on my upper lashes and line them. And I will do a wing to show you guys. I don't always do a wing, but just to show you that it is relatively easy to do it with this, I will wing it out it has a really precise tip, so it's pretty easy to get like a sharp, good looking wing. Like so, and then just fill it on in. When I first got into makeup, I would literally do the largest wing ever. Like, I don't know where I was going with that. I could have like literally flown to like Australia and back with how big my wing was. It would like literally like meet my eyebrow tip and I look at pictures and I'm like, why didn't somebody tell me? But winged liner is just definitely something that does take practice. For my waterline liner, which is like inside the eye, um, I really love the L'Oreal Silk Kiss Me line. So this is the charcoal one, and this is one of my favorite darker liners. So I'm gonna go in with this on my waterline. It's very, very pigmented. As you see, like as soon as it hits there, it's already distributing pigment. Cause some liners just like won't show up on that area because it is always like so wet because it's like touching the inside of your eye. But this one is good. And this liner does come in a variety of colors. I just like the charcoal one. It's like a smidge lighter than black and has a little bit of like a pretty like sheen to it, but it comes in a variety of colors. 
Okay, lashes, this should come as no surprise to literally anyone. Um, Salon Perfect 614s, this is like my most used lash by far, as you can tell, I only have one left in this little five pack, but I literally have like 35 of these five packs because I go through these like water. They are just the perfect lash. You can get them at Walmart in this five pack for like $8, sometimes even a little bit cheaper. They're beautiful, they're wispy, I love them. They're very light on the eyes, so even if you're a beginner, like you're not really gonna feel these on your eyes. Like I remember when I first got into makeup, I would wear these like really, really bold lashes they were so heavy on my eyes. I'm like, how do people wear these? I'm telling you guys, if applied properly, you really won't feel these. Like when you first put them on, you're going to feel them until the glue is dry, but then you're not going to feel them because they're so light and wispy. So like high-end drugstore, whatever, these are my favorite. So you just want to get them as close to the lash line as possible. And as you can see, I just use little curved tweezers to apply them. I just find that to be easier than my fingers, again, because my nails are long. But it's also just kind of easier. I don't know. These are from Lily Lashes, but I mean curved tweezers from anywhere will, will do the job. Another pro tip is when you apply the glue to your lashes, let it sit on the lash for like 30 seconds because that's going to really help it to not be so watery and get a little bit more tacky before you go in and apply it to your eye. If you try and apply it to your eye right after you apply the glue, it's still going to be really, really watery and it can get really messy really quickly. So you don't want to wait too long or it'll completely dry, but about 30 seconds is kind of like that sweet spot where it's still tacky but it's not going to be as messy. And then you can just go and pop it on and then adjust as needed with your little tweezers or your fingers. Okay, up next, for mascara, obviously, even if you do false lashes, you do have to use mascara to blend your natural lashes in with the falsies and obviously your bottom lashes as well. Or if you're not doing falsies at all and you just want to do a mascara, this is a category where I feel like the drugstore does excel. There's a lot of great drugstore mascaras. One of my recent favorites, though, is the CoverGirl Exhibitionist Uncensored. This is really, really good. And it reminds me a lot of the Lancome Miso Big, which is one of my absolute favorite high-end mascaras. It's more of a moussey consistency. It's not super watery, and it really builds a lot of volume really fast on your lashes. So I love this. So I'm going to go in with this on my lower lashes and then we will of course go in to blend the natural lashes in with the falsies once that lash glue has like completely dried. If you have darker lashes naturally, you may not have to blend your naturals in with the falsies, but since my natural lashes are super light, I do have to blend them in or you can like see the difference obviously. But if you're blessed with dark lashes, you might not have to do this. Okay, up next we're going to finish off the face. So first things first, I like to go in with a more glowy bronzer all over my face just to bronze up my skin. I like that more like kind of bronzy, glowy look. And then I will use a matte bronzer to contour. But I like to use a bronzer that has a little bit of shimmer, a little glow to it. So my favorite is the L'Oreal Bronze Please Bronzer. I'm pretty sure this line is exclusive to Walmart, but it is fabulous. And you will like literally never hit pan on this. I've used this so many times and it like doesn't even look like it's been used. So it's gonna last a very long time because it's a huge pan. So I like to just bronze up my face with this first. I also feel like it helps to make contour look a little bit more natural. So I kind of go in like a three motion on my face. Those are kind of the areas that you want to bronze and contour. So that's what I do. I always have loved L'Oreal's bronzers. I feel like they have really nice ones. So again, to contour, you want to go in with a bronzer that is matte, that doesn't have shimmer to it, and that's to really like chisel out the cheeks and wherever else you want to contour. So my favorite is actually from Koki, and you can get this at Rite Aid or Walgreens, and they do have it at some Ulta's, I believe, as well. And this comes in a couple different shades, but I'm going to go in with Heat Wave. Um, also, if you live in the tri-state area and you have a Harmons or a Face Values, you can get this there. I love me some Harmons, but I know that like not everybody has that. So I'm going to go in and contour out my cheekbones with this. And this does come in a variety of different shades too. So if you need something a little darker or something a little lighter, they have it. So just sculpting everything out. I am going to go in on my nose as well and just sculpt that out too. So it looks nice and straight. Up next for a blush, I have a couple favorites. So one I want to talk about, this is from the same collection as the L'Oreal bronzer that we used. This is the Blush Please. So this blush is in Blushin' in Riviera, and it is so, so beautiful. This is such a good dupe for NARS Orgasm. They're very, very similar. It does have glitter in it, but it's not chunky, so it's very pretty. But I do also really like, this is newer. This is from Wet n Wild, and this is the Hello Halo Blush Lighter. So basically this little set comes with a highlighter and then also a blush. The blushes are honestly say pretty similar 
in shade. This is really pretty too. This one definitely has more shimmer in it, where this one is like a little bit more low key. So I'm gonna use this one today, but they're both really, really great options that I wanted to include. And it's nice that this one comes in like a little duo, so you get a blush and a highlight. And the highlight in that one is really nice as well. So I'm gonna go in with this guy on my cheeks. Just so, so pretty. If you guys see the sheen that it adds, obviously we're gonna go in with highlighter. Hi, I'm Kelly and I'm obsessed with highlighter if this is your first video of mine. But this adds a really pretty sheen to the skin as well and just really amps up that glowiness. And it's kind of like a peachy, corally undertone. It's just so pretty. Now for highlighter, I have a couple favorites because I love highlighter. So one that I love is the L'Oreal Crushed Foils Metallic. This is so, so beautiful. This is the shade Rose Quartz. It looks like that. It's stunning. It's beautiful. Definitely one of my favorites. A newer favorite I have, this is new from Revlon, and this is their Skin Lights Collection. This is their Prismatic Highlighter in the shade Twilight Gleam. I'll swatch it right next. So that is the Revlon one. A little bit more glittery, where this one is a little bit more shimmery. So depending on how you like your highlights. And then, like I said, I love this one in the little Wet n Wild duo. So I'm going to be using this one today from the Wet n Wild Hello Halo duo. And I'm just going to apply that to my cheeks. Ooh! See? I like to glow. And this glows. So, so pretty. Ooh! I like to bring it down my nose as well and above my cupid's bow. And these blush lighters do come in a couple different options as well. This one is actually called after sex glow, but there's a couple different options. And last but not least, for our lips, my favorite lip liner is the NYX Retractable Lip Liner in the shade Nude. I use this all the time. It's honestly the best. NYX from the drugstore, in my opinion, has the best lip liners. So regardless of what color you're looking for, they're going to have it. They have a huge shade range. But the Nude one is great for neutral lips. So I'm going to go in and just line my lips with this. It's just like a year lips but better kind of color. For lipstick, my favorite from the drugstore, this is actually newer too. This is from Revlon and this is the Super Lustrous Matte in the shade Untold Stories. This is so, so good. It's a matte lipstick and the most beautiful nude. Like it's literally like the perfect nude. I've been using this more than like my MAC lipsticks, like my high-end lipsticks. This has been my go-to. And even though it's matte, it's not drying to the lips, but it lasts a really long time. Do you guys see just like how perfect that is? Oh! I love light pink mauve nudes, and this one is just perfect. And like I said, it is matte, but it is not drying to the lips, so you don't have to worry about that. But it does last a really long time. But of course, you guys know we gotta use gloss, because I love a glossy lip. So my favorite is actually also from Revlon, and this is the Revlon Super Lustrous The Gloss in the shade Lean In. These glosses are really, really nice. They come in a ton of different colors, but this pink one is my favorite for like the neutral lips that I do. And I'm just gonna top that on. It's just like kind of baby pink, but adds some sparkle and shine to the lips, which I love. It just makes them look so juicy. And it's not sticky at all either. It's very smooth because some drugstore lip glosses can be very sticky. And then last but not least, to set everything in place, we're going to go in with the L'Oreal Lumi Shake and Glow Dew Mist. I like something that's going to give me a little bit of like a dewy finish, but also set my face. So that's exactly what this does. If you don't want a dewy finish, I know Maybelline has a really nice setting spray as well. That's just like a flat finish. It's not going to give you any dew or anything, but I do really enjoy this one. So just going to spritz it on my face like so and it smells really nice it has like a light scent to it it's very refreshing and pretty and as you can see it's not adding like glitter or anything to my face it's just like a nice hydrating refreshing glow and i personally really like it and the spritzer is really light which is nice all right you guys so that is everything i hope that you enjoyed today's video i hope you learned something definitely let me know down below what your drugstore favorites are or what would be in your starter kit i would love to hear thank you guys so much for watching and i will see you very soon in my next video bye